object. Hey, I'm sure that. Yeah. It's a planet in the solar system. In the solar system. <laughs> so we know most of the big planets in the solar system. We already have observed those and know which ones they are. But are there other things in the solar system we could discover with this type of this type of telescope that observes a huge field in the sky and then comes back a few days later and does exactly the same region? What would we find? What could we find? We find all the big planets. Huh? Near Earth object. Yes, little planets, little <laughs> asteroids. So this is what this telescope does. It looks for supernovae and it looks for planets. So if you observe the sky, come back a few days later, you look exactly at the same point, you see things that move, and you think you see things that flash. And this is what the telescope this is what this telescope does. So we work with uh, with NGU in, in Taiwan on this project with Harvard. Uh, built by the University of Hawaii. We work with Harvard, Max Planck Institute in Germany, Johns Hopkins, and uh, two universities in the UK. We use this huge camera to observe the sky. This is the size of the full moon, and this is the size of the camera when you point it at the sky. This is the biggest camera that's been built for astronomy. It sees an area which is much bigger than the full moon. So you see lots of stars, supernovae, and asteroids. So this is what our future work will do with uh, in supernovae and asteroids that we hope to do with our with our Taiwanese colleagues. So I'll give you my conclusions of my talk and, and give you lots of time for uh, for questions. So we've detected the progenitors of supernovae. They match our computer models for stars in the mass between about eight and twenty times the mass of the sun. But we don't get very bright ones. We're not as many as we thought. We think they may form black holes and no explosion. I have a question mark here because it's still not certain, but it may be that they, we certainly see black holes and we don't seem to find the most massive stars exploding. So we think they may be missing, we may be missing this class of faint explosions. We haven't seen them. And in the future, we'll use Hubble, but we'll also use telescopes like pan stars to find the most unusual supernovae and perhaps we are, what we're looking for is to see if we can find the faint explosions that are rare in the universe and that you need a big, tel a big camera to detect the very rarest supernova. That's what we want to do in the future. According to Hubble, that our university is extending to 
every, every day. And according to Harvard, this could be the very huge university. You know, university. Sorry. University? Yeah. And is there any possible that the material in this, our universe, cannot sustain this huge, the huge universe? Um, so I, I guess you're asking what might be the future of the universe as it expands. Can the universe expand forever? Yeah. Or, or collapse? Or collapse? Yeah. So there are several possibilities. If there's enough matter in the universe, it may just about slow the expansion. So it goes into the free flow. Or there may be enough matter that the universe collapses in what is called the big crunch. It's a bit like kicking a football up in the air. If you give it enough kinetic energy, it would escape the Earth's gravitational field. If you give it just enough energy, it would, uh, it would just about escape. But if you don't give it enough energy, the Earth's gravitational field will pull the football back down. So those three possibilities, it's still not clear how much matter and energy there is in the universe, what the density of those, uh, of the matter in the universe, the dark matter in the universe, and the dark energy is. So the, the answer is we don't know what the ultimate fate of the universe is, but the most likely explanation is that it will expand forever because of this using supernovae to find the, ex, uh, have, have found that project has found that the universe is accelerating and probably will not collapse into the big crunch. So it's more likely that it will expand forever. Um, is there possible that there are many, many universes like this, our universe? Yes. So that's, there is a current theory called the theory of, of the multiverse. And the idea there is that we're not just one universe, but there may be infinite numbers of universes. Um, this is one way to get around the problems within quantum mechanics, for example, and, a, and another way to get around the issue that all of the constants in physics seem to be just right for us, for the universe to exist as we see it, and for life, and for planets, galaxies, and planets to form. Perhaps if there is an infinite number of universes, then an infinite number of possibilities can exist, and we are just one of them. So that, that's certainly a theoretical view that's been, uh, that's very popular right now. Thank you, Professor. Okay. 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 表面温度，为什么搞到温度要高达八十九点五百牛皮？啊！对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，
it's for historical reasons. It's a good question. Good question. Thank you very
And the next successor to Hubble is called the James Webb Space Telescope, which will be built by NASA and ESA. It's being built, um, but that's of the order of five to ten billion dollars. Simply 接著哈勃的一九九零年的產能some gamma rays, uh, but the gamma rays won't be strong enough to affect it. Because of the distance being reduced, it won't be strong enough to affect us. The only problem would be if we, in the future, if the Earth drifted close to a massive star that might produce a gamma ray burst. The gamma ray bursts are very rare. They're, they happen once in every 10,000 supernovae. They're rare in our galaxy. Uh, people choose would be, wouldn't affect the Earth in any, in any physical way. But I think it would affect society because people would see this bright star in the sky that's as bright as the, the crescent moon or six months of the, of the, of the year, bright during the daytime. Um, and I think society would take much more, um, uh, much more, uh, pay more and much more attention to astronomy because everyone would see it. So I think people would ask, what is this? And what is this thing I can see in the sky? So I think it would affect us. Uh, I think it would affect society in a good way. I think people would think of science more, uh, but it wouldn't have any physical effect on the Earth. It's too far away. Marodi是比较重要的，它是随时会爆发，对吧？可能明天、等一下礼拜，可能突然间一个爆发的话，对我们有什么影响？干嘛？谁说的？我们要让我们来，我们不会让它变，我们不怕上课就冲击，会变成
end up in the gas clouds in our Milky Way and will almost certainly form new stars and new planets probably in the in the future in about 10 to 20 million years time as the as this gas becomes absorbed into the the rest of the gas in the Milky Way it will form new stars and new planets that's the ultimate fate of this of this gas it's rich in oxygen and iron and magnesium and silicon the chemical elements elements that can form rocky planets so our solar system was formed from gas like this that was created in previous generations of supernova. Neutron star. So these are think of um, think of atomic an, an atomic nucleus. Um, so the neutron stars have that density, the density of an atomic nucleus, and they're about ten kilometers in in uh, diameter, and have the density of an atomic nucleus. Um, the inner structure of it, we think, is made of neutrons packed then tightly together. And the reason they don't collapse is because of a, a physical principle called uh, degeneracy pressure. And fundamental particles can't be squeezed together into the same quantum state. And so they have a fundamental pressure that they resist being pushed together too closely. And so there are models of neutron stars that, that are, the reason they, that they don't actually produce any energy, any nuclear energy like stars, but they're held up by this pressure of the neutrons can't be squeezed closely together. But they're like a they're like a, a, a nucleus, a atomic nucleus, only ten kilometers in size. Okay. 可是你不能把一块钱跟一块钱再压得更紧了2.5 times the mass of the sun, 2.3. Most neutron stars are 1.4 times the mass of the sun, roughly, and we don't see any more massive than 2.3 solar masses. Objects more massive than that are probably black holes. They're neutron stars that cannot be stable when they collapse to black holes. It's a good question. Okay. There's one in the back. Well, then here. Oh, the microphone is right here. Hold up, hold up. I want to ask uh, why they said that there was gold. There was gold in Hawaii, but not in other places. Why in Hawaii? Um, the, um, because in Hawaii, they've got two mountains which are very high. One is Mauna Kea, which is 4,000 meters in, um, in altitude. And it's very dry. It hardly ever rains. There's hardly ever any cloud. So it's because the climate is very good. And it's also very dark. There's not, there's, it's not light polluted. Uh, there's another mountain in Hawaii as well. Uh, on the island of Maui, which is 2,000 meters. And again, that's also a very good site for astronomy. The skies are very clear. 
and it, it's, it's, um, it's a very high site, 2,000 meters. So those, when we build telescopes, we like them to put them on the driest place we can find and the place with the least clog. So this is the我们刚刚问题是为什么我已经放在夏威夷了很高的山很高的山下午一个地方就不适合做我们的钱台湾也是一个岛可是我们不是故意在海洋中间我们可以去变化一点做法我们要请问一下就是如果西格斯粒子的发现的话会不会有助于潮汐性爆炸的中或者
and then form unstable nuclei and then decay. And so that's the fundamental process that, that allows the buildup of the elements heavier than iron. They're not created in, in stars and stellar evolution by fusion processes, but they are made in stars by neutron capture processes onto heavy elements. Um, and so this is, this is how all of those elements are built up. But it's quite a rare process, and there are two different types.